Hi, Sharon Graves, Painting with Acrylics 101, an online beginning painting school. Um, I am in the studio today and we are going to learn about reds. I have some freezer paper, and that's honest to goodness, that's all it is, is Reynolds Wrap freezer paper. Get it in the grocery store, pay about five or six dollars for this huge big 150 square feet as opposed to maybe a dollar a sheet or even 50 cents a sheet for um, some watercolor paper or another kind of paper. This doesn't let the paint bleed through. It's very smooth. So as you're learning how to mix things and how to make strokes, I love this to practice on because you're not also, you know, as you try to learn how to use your brush and move it, you're not also trying to fight the tooth of the canvas or the paper. So it just makes it so easy in the beginning. So I highly recommend this. You can also use this as a palette. Um, you know, just squirt out a little bit of paint of each color you want to work. And, you know, it's not going through the paper. And when you're done, wad it up, throw it away. <laughs> okay, on my palette today, I have Cad Yellow, Cad Orange, and Cad Red, <clears throat> uh, Ultramarine Blue, and alizarin crimson and white and you're going to say well sharon why is that red away from this bunch over here with that blue in the middle in my palette and and most artists do this i don't know of any who don't um, they lay their palette out the lightest color uh, in the warm colors lightest to darkest and then again lightest to darkest in the cool colors this alizarin crimson is cool and this cad red light is warm so when you um, put them next to each other maybe you'll see the difference uh, before I paint anything I always this is a um, I always have to read this off I can never remember a, a Royal soft grip SG 700 bought it online couple of bucks I mean this is a very inexpensive brush and I love it um, I tap my brush in the water and then I put it between the paper toweling. It just needs a little, acrylic paint needs a little moisture to uh, adhere to the brush. Um, so I'm going to, we're going to look at these two colors side by side. Okay, so here is Cad Red Light. Now in order to give you a good um, demonstration of what they look like, I have to rinse that brush out and I will have to rinse it out a lot. Okay, so here is the alizarin crimson. Now you can see how much warmer this one is than this. So now you know why this is in the cool side of my palette. Alizarin crimson, as most, um, well, many acrylic paints are uh, transparent, and so in order to make them opaque, you need to add just a touch of titanium white. And that will make it opaque so you can't see through it. Now, you don't want to turn it pink, which is, you know, here's some red and right here's some white. Okay, so I kind of turned it kind of light pink there. Now, if I add a little more alizarin crimson, I can darken it up and, and basically still get the color that I want but now you can't see the paper underneath there. So that makes a big difference. Now, when I teach my own students here uh, in the studio, one of the things that I always try to um, encourage or make sure that they understand is red eats everything. Um, so when you're adding red to something, you wanna add it in small increments. You wouldn't take this whole pile of red paint and try to mix it with something else. It's way too much red paint and, and you'd have to add half a tube in order to change that. So what? that's why I'm always saying pull some off, okay? So it that's what I'm talking about is right there. Just pull a little off, put it off to the side. Okay, now we could take some of the ultramarine blue and add that and we can make our own purple. Or it also makes a really good value change for that. Now, maybe, I don't ever mix anything up too much. I really like the 
um, the changes, the diversity in that color. I like seeing all of the shades in there. It gives your painting much more life, much more vibrancy. It's looser. So don't mix it up like cake batter, okay? <laughs> Just mix it, get it on there. If there is a color that sticks out too much, maybe go over it a time or two and it will mix on the painting. Um, I'm going to rinse here. So now I'm going to take um, this a little, some of this um, Cad Red Light, and I'm going to pull it over here. Now, if I didn't have my own orange, I can add some yellow to that and make a beautiful pumpkin orange. Now, let's just look here. Here's this. Okay, now see, you can see some yellow, some, there's the, the red, there's deeper orange. It, it, there's a lot going on in that little strip. Now let me show you the difference. If you take just the orange, okay, it's very flat. If you were painting a pumpkin, you would never just use orange. Always throw some of each of these colors in there, um, particularly the yellow. As the pumpkin were coming around, whoops, wrong, wrong pile there. As the pumpkin were coming around, let the brush do the work for you and let it add There, okay? So you can see it's got, you almost don't have to put in anything to tell you where the little ribs are and everything, but it will <clears throat> show you the highlights that are on that pumpkin. And I, I love that. When that shows up like that, I, I just, I love it. <laughs> I just think it's wonderful when that happens. So um, don't mix it up like cake batter. Let some various colors um, come through and, and and you'll see the vibrancy in that. Um, thanks again for being here today in my studio and as uh, as always my name is Sharon Graves at uh, paintingwithacrylics101.com and if you like this video um, click the thumbs up button and um, subscribe to my channel and if you click that little bell next to it then you'll know that um, it'll, all, it'll alert you and you'll know when new stuff's coming so have a great day thanks a lot see you later